well afterwards, so that's oh, not bad, right? Yeah, that's not bad, right? That's that is good. I don't know. I don't know if any. Well, when we do our show, we don't do it public. Right. Well, we're doing it public right now, but we're not releasing it. It just goes to the the YouTube channel, and I let it sit there open. Yeah. yeah so people can come back and watch it if they want. Like people are watching this right now because we're actually recording. Okay. You Hi, know. Everyone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. I mean. I knew one person. I, yeah, thanks for one person for subscribing. I just I just noticed it because I was in my YouTube uploading stuff because I've been working on the YouTube doing all these green screen videos are driving me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ready? Okay, let me think. You got to think of something catchy. No. Um, okay. Um, okay. I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna do a new opening. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna try one out too. So you keep thinking of your closing. I'll keep thinking of my opening. The close, and again, these will always change. So Okay, so yeah, we can change it. Everybody always likes my hello, though, because I do it the Jerry Seinfeld. Hello. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready, John, edit here. Hello, and welcome to the Steam Team. The Steam Team is in the house. Woohoo! I'm John Samuelson. I'm up in Portland, Oregon. I'm going to kick it down to my main man, and his name is... Brian Briggs and that I am so much better. In, that is, is so much better. Um, I am in Davis, California, right outside Sacramento. So just hanging That's out. Right. Yeah. Do you ever bump into Michelle Reed down there in Sacramento? Michelle? No, no. I I told you that my cousin worked for her. <laughs> you yeah. did. Yeah. I felt sorry for her. Yeah. No. No. It wasn't a good outcome. But do you know that uh, there was a tweet the other day that um, somebody said something about Baltimore public schools and something something. Oh, it was Joe Flacco visited Baltimore public schools and gave them an award. Right. Since Joe Flacco's the quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens, I wish he was the quarterback for the Chicago Bears. And so <laughs> anyway, they went in there and I said, I said in a side note. Uh, Ravens quarterback finds Michelle Reed opens closet and finds Michelle Reed cheating on standardized tests. What a bunch. <laughs> we don't. Right. Oh, I forgot my uh, I forgot my stuff. Here, we're supposed to. Do it. It's Brian Briggs. <laughs> Sound effects. We'll get there, Brian, with this one. Thanks for the people that listened to the podcast and shared it out. We appreciate it. So we're going right strong right afterwards. So that was kind of a fake episode because we we're just kind of planning things out. We're going to try and see this. It might be more like a real episode. So you still might not want to listen to this podcast. We're just yeah. saying this right now. You may not want to listen to this podcast or you may think it's great. Yeah, that's right. We're, as you say, we're building up steam. That's right. We're building <laughs> up I need to get the hi hat on my phone. Ever since Google Hangouts lost the stuff, you know, yeah. lost the sound effects, whatever. Okay, Brian. So we're going to talk a little bit today about little bits. Oh, little bit. oh. I, you know what? Just ever since ever since doing the little bit stuff, I find out how much I say the word little bit. Yeah, just a little I, bit. I say it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Little bits. We'll give you a little bit of. <laughs> see, I don't. I, I'm totally not doing that on purpose. Okay, so we're gonna give um, a, a, some background instead of okay. saying a little bit of background. Yeah. So my background is I really thought the little bits looked super cool, and Brian, you can give yours too. Your background in a second. So um, when I saw, you know, there's a lot of education programs out there. You can be this kind of an ambassador. You can be that kind of an ambassador. You can be an Apple Distinguished Educator. You can be a Google Level Certified 54. So what I thought that um, I saw real quick right before the Q conference was Little Bits was taking lead educators. So what I did was I looked at it and I thought, oh, that's that's cool. I do like the Little Bits. I'd like to get to know how to use them more. And um, if you did a kind of a thorough little, you know, it wasn't that thorough, but you did some little Google form and whatever, and, and some, you had to actually submit a letter of recommendation too. They said that you could pilot their new coding kit before it was available to everyone else and they would give you three of them. Oh, nice. And so that's about $900 worth of little bits. And I thought, you know what? I'll start doing the educator programs if they give me some stuff to use with students and then I can keep and keep using with students, that's that's a substantial amount of little bits. Three coding kits before they're available to the public is really cool. So before we go into this, we will d deliver disclaimers on things. So disclaimer, I am a little bits lead educator and I will be at ISTE at the booth, but that's because I'm just one of the 16 people that has actually really used the kit with students. So there's my disclaimer for you. I had a ton of little bits 
and I just hadn't really been using them too much. I'd even bought the PD online, which I'm trying to get reimbursed for from my school district, and they're giving me a totally hard time for it, which is great because you know how my payroll department is. In <laughs> right, Brian? So anyway, any chance to give me some static, they're ready for it. But um, So I haven't even taken the Steam set PD online, but I do have it ready to go. So I figured the best way to get iPad Sammy working on stuff is just to throw him into the fire and make me do stuff. So I do have some real big hands-on experience with it. And there's not a lot of people that do right now with this code kit. So when you first saw Little Bits, Brian, tell us about what you thought. The Little Bits, uh, I forget when I saw them, maybe about two years ago um, when they first started beta them out. And I, I really thought they were cool when I first saw them. I, I thought, you know, um, I'd be interested in them. So I ordered, that's when you, uh, I ordered the, what was it, the Wi-Fi kit. And that was even before they had boxes. It was delivered in a bur little burlap bag. Oh, wow. Um, you're, you're way old school in the little bits then. Yeah. yeah, so I still have those two kits. And, you know, I just I just love the idea of these little modules that you can just clip together. And then the thought of you can use them with different kits to make an even, like, a, an elaborate kind of connections. I'm trying to, like, uh, how to associate with something. It's... Um, like circuitry, mm -hmm. basically. So you just clip these things together and they're magnetic so you know which side it fits on because they're going to click together. Um, and again, I, I get, it, it just really feeds into that maker mentality because whatever you can think of, whatever you can wonder about, you can attempt to make it with these. So um, I ended up getting a couple more sets, like the synthesizer set, uh, mm -hmm. the what's the room one? The rule your room. Rule your room. Uh, I have the base set, and again, I just got them for myself to tinker around with before you know getting sets for school. I got to say, you gave your disclaimer. My one disclaimer is they're they're not they're not cheap. But oh, they're no, not expensive. No. They're not overly expensive. They're right around. Again, it seems like the market for price wise is right probably around a hundred dollars for a lot of the robot stuff, anyways. So this falls right in line on that. But when you're trying to buy multiple kits for your district or your schools, it does add up. So that's why I was just getting a few that I could do on my own, and then um, I do it with my kids also mm -hmm. at the house, just just so I can get ideas and, like you said, force yourself into it. So. That's kind of like how I got into it and then started following or seeing what you were doing. And mm -hmm. then I got some. And then how long ago did they mention the coding kit? Was it, was it about th three months ago? Yeah, it was about three months ago, I think. Yeah, I saw the little uh, announcement for it and I was I was dying for it. Uh, I signed up for the beta uh, when it first came out. But I know I haven't pulled the trigger on it because it is it is on the high it's side. Two hundred yeah, it's two hundred ninety nine ninety five, right? Yeah, and then I'm um, right. So that's what we'll, we're even though like so we're doing this show, but right by no means. I mean, and I I do I do like them. If I didn't like them, I would be honest with them. I'm usually pretty honest. In fact, probably honest to a fault, Brian. That gets me in trouble, <laughs> especially yeah. with administrators. Right? I'm kind of honest. So anyway. They they are not like you can buy classroom sets, but they they do run you about forty nine hundred dollars if you yeah. want like the full setup. And I can remember when I saw Tim Lauer in Portland Public Schools, our fine administrator who has now moved across the uh, border to Washington. Oh. Um, but he bought one for his school, and they really liked them at Lewis. But it, you know, it's you're you're buying it for five thousand dollars is what you're buying it for. Um, and yeah, I thought once they started doing the rule your room kits and things like that. I think that it's really interesting. Um, and so anyway, so I'll go into a little bit of what we're talking <laughs> Keep saying a little bit. I'll go into <laughs> what we're talking about. So the coding kit is pretty much brand new released on June 1st. Okay. Right now it is currently June 21st. So it's been out for three weeks. You probably haven't used it with students. I used it for the entire month of May with students. Okay. And, we're and currently right now we're still in school in Portland, by the way. We get out tomorrow in Beaverton, Oregon. Portland's, Portland's probably out. I know we should give applause for that. Yeah. So this is their second kit that is designed specifically for students and education. I mean, everything that they do is designed for, for kids, right, and students. Yeah. But this is their one focus more on teachers. So there's the STEAM education kit, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And then there's now the coding kit. Okay. Brian and I are huge fans of the computer science and the coding. We will probably do something later on. And in fact, I'll mention one of my old episodes. I have the only episode of Teaching in Beta podcast right now, but I do have an interview with Natalie Rusk from the MIT Media Lab. And there's there's a whole bunch of cool stuff that's going on with Scratch too. Do you have an episode of Check This Out, Brian, that talks about coding a little bit? Uh, I think we do have one. I can't tell you the exact episode. Because you guys have a million episodes and actually have been podcasting. It's easy for me to say it's episode one because it's the only one I've done. So <laughs> there you go right there. And check one of the 75 episodes of Check. How many episodes are you up to on Check This Out now? Uh, like I said, uh, it was, I think, roughly around 63 I did this. You guys today. are doing it. Yeah, you guys, that's good. You're like me when I used to Techlandia days. We used to be so, we, we were so energetic and young back then. Now I'm old, gray hair. <laughs> I'm receding hairline. So um, the little bits twins. are. <laughs> so the little bits, um, three hundred dollars, okay, for the coding kit. Now, what what was advised for us, and their their standard is, it's one kit for every three students, okay. So they're okay. so do the math. When it's I was, doing, I had hundred bucks, uh, hundred bucks, hundred bucks a student, right? So then, um, when you're thinking about it. Um, I we did wanted to be fair when we tested it out with a class because I asked a class in Beaverton. I did it with a group of third graders and a great teacher, Miss Willis, and um, we I did the I took them out in rotations of three. So I probably did three times as much work as they wanted me to because I worked you worked it with twenty seven students basically, and there was probably twenty six or twenty five. But that's you know the, it, we took them out in groups of three. So I would go there for after lunch and take them out in rotations and work with them for about the 30 or 45 minute lessons. So how you set it up is there is a little bit, if you go right now, there's a Chrome extension oh, nice. that works with, and you can download the other extensions for computers too. We happen to be on Chromebooks, and so that's what the, they had. And so we use them with the Chrome extension, and then you have one of those little uh, USB things that you plug into one of the, um, for Bluetooth. And so then it hooks in through Bluetooth. And when it hooks in, um, you can hit the button on the code bit, which is a, it's a really large bit. Um, I'm sure if they sell them separately, it's got to probably be it because they, they will sell the, the bit separately. And if you're one of the eight people that are watching the YouTube <laughs> channel, I do have like one of them right here. So this is one of our ones for USB power. Blue is power. And then, um, uh, that was one that I'm going to send back because it kind of, of course, a girl broke it right away. And power is the most one of the more important <laughs> one bits to have. Yeah. So um, anyway, it's just interesting. So it'll hook in. You hit a little button, and it'll say like it's the um, amazing muskrat or something like that. It's like, ooh, do you want to hook to the, you know, the bandic crash bandicoot dongle or whatever? And then that's the name of your code bit. And so okay. each of them have kind of like interesting names like that. Like I, I'm serious. I think amazing muskrat was one of them. And um, so then they hook into it and then what they can do is in the, you can either start with a blight canvas mm -hmm. or you can start with one of their four projects to do. Okay. And so that's kind of how it's, so that's kind of how it starts out. And so their four already made projects that they have videos of that you can show rockstar guitar, hot mm -hmm. potato of doom, Ultimate Shootout and Tug of War. Okay, so they have all those available. So you, are you following me so far, Brian? Because I, I don't want to talk too much, but uh, yeah. Like, one saying? question. One question sure. I have for you on there is: it Blockly coding, or is it using their own type of like? I can see them using like pulling a module over mm -hmm. and then linking it that way. So that was a little bit of one of the cha more challenges for me. So it is their own form of block coding. Okay. So it is it is a it is a block coding, but it is a little bit different than Scratch. Like so, you're not using Scratch; you're kind of using their own version of a Got block it. coding, kind of like you would what we were talking about with Ozo Blockly, okay. and the Ozobots from the first episode. So it, it was a little bit more of a challenge because I'm I think I'm getting better at Scratch is what I'm getting at because I've been teaching a lot of lessons with it. So I'm good at debugging Scratch. A little bit harder for me. I think as I get used to it, I'll I'll be better with it. So um. We were chosen to do, luckily, um, I could have chosen between. So they kind of a little bit said, do either this one or that one. So I got Hot Potato of Doom or Guitar. Okay. So we chose the guitar because, nice. of course, why would you not choose the yeah. guitar? 
<laughs> and uh, my my daughter, who's in second grade, we went through the hot potato of doom, and she made that no problem on mm -hmm. her own. I didn't even help her. I just, just gave her the video uh -huh. and her watch, and she made it, Brian. Okay, so what is the hot potato of doom? The hot potato of doom is not actually like you go to Idaho, pick a potato, eat it, and then you know and put Tabasco sauce on it. Right, exactly. Um, you don't go and you don't go and like have to meet Simon Miller from Idaho and then yeah. <laughs> get a secret password. So uh, the hot potato of doom is just it's they have these little mounting boards that you can snap the kits onto. They're the, the that come with a kit it's like a white square with a bunch of circles on it and then you can snap the bits in there so this is how we have the guitar and in fact when we do this brian and i are actually doing a wait for it here wait let's see what we can do a that's a modem i just that's the only sound effect i had though we are actually doing a google doc where we have some links and so what we're thinking is as we 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 were actually making the doc. And we were kind of talking to each other back and forth on Boxer, and we're like, "Hey, we're kind of deciding what we're going to do here. We're kind of morphing this podcast. So we'll make an Adobe Spark page with the links, and I will also include some pictures so that you know what I'm talking about, and we'll Perfect. include a link to the podcast. So if people out there, and not that we're trying to, we I never try and do you ever try and cater to listeners, Brian, and be like, oh, please, you know, give me a review in iTunes, and do you do that stuff? We try, but it doesn't work. Right. So then you, you try and do that. And if anybody ever wants to give us a review on iTunes, we would totally take one. Yeah. But we're not going to ask for it every episode. So, But we would love for you to share the work because we are trying to do some work here. And yeah. we would love for people to know about this stuff. So if this sounds interesting to you, share the Adobe Spark page. It's just a quick like retweet or share the link or whatever. So we'll have the links to a bunch. Brian put in tons of stuff. I put in absolutely none of stuff, <laughs> but Brian put in tons of stuff, but that's why now I'll make the page. So um, it, it's really cool. And the hot potato is on there. So you put all the bits on there and then it kind of has a timer that you code and it counts down. So you play hot potato. So you okay. pass it around, pass it around, and then it kind of gets faster and faster and then it explodes. And then the little, it, what's cool about these kits is it has a little LED matrix and yeah. it can say boom. And so with the LED matrix, the kids loved it because you can put pictures on there mm. and that's all part of the coding. So that I feel like that's something that's really different that other coding things don't offer. You can't really code an LED matrix. And in fact, when you do the first lesson, the first lesson is called one of those hello world ones. Yeah, and yeah. so you get the LED matrix to print, you know, it looks like a Goodyear blimp going oh, nice. hello world. And then the kids were like, whoa. Okay. And so that hooked them in. Now that does, was the first one. Does the LED screen come with the kit? Yes. And how approximately how big is the screen? I would say it's 16 by 16 pixels is what it is, but it's probably about five inches by five inches. It has to be big enough where you can see it, but it also has to be small enough so you can pluck it onto the mounting board and then have the other bits that are in there too. Okay. Oh, that's, so it's that's pretty good. So cool. I mean, it's, it's a decent size. Yeah, and you can you can animate on it. You can put yeah, you, words to scroll across. You it's answered cool. my other question. I had like you said, it's like three students per kid is ideal. Yes, and that's so, what's recommended for it. For okay, sure. that's cool because I because again it it falls in line. Another pricey one is Lego, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the NXT. But I think they're they recommend two mm -hmm. per kid, and those kits are expensive. So I mean, I like the idea about the three students per kit, and maybe you can stretch it to four maybe give them each a role uh, for keeping that. Because my other part that I don't know if you've stumbled upon, um, if you had any of these little pieces walk away. So that brings up a good point. All right, so here I can give you a little, here's our pro tip for you. First of all, I did have five girls working on one. Okay. We had a group that they couldn't get together. And it's tough for me because as a TOSA, remember, teacher out at Starbucks all the time. <laughs> Feel free to use that with your friends. People have been stealing it a lot lately. So um, as a toast, I don't know every like the ins and outs of every third grade student, right? I only know that I taught for 20 years, but it's been a while since I've been in the classroom. So I kind of made my executive decision. I was like, oh, no, 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 we're not going to have problems. You five work together. And they actually work together pretty well. But they're probably the engagement on one of them, probably not the best, you okay. know. So four, I think four is definitely doable. Oh, nice. Okay. For that one. Um, so anyway, after we do that, so um, yeah, that's that's one of the... So when you have that, how much are the, the Lego We Do kits? Are they about the same price range? 
the we do's i don't know the price of they those 49 just, they might be close they're in the yeah. ballpark they're in the ballpark for sure that'd be a good one for us to talk about sometime too is the we do's i've done a lot of work with those too okay, okay so the first lessons hello world and so that was great pull them out the second day and then i showed them the video for rockstar guitar and then i did it completely out of order from the video because they show how to do all the coding and how to connect the bits and then they put the makerspace guitar which okay. is out of cardboard or whatever and i'll include the pictures and the stuff but so then i did it the opposite so i had him go the second day i had him go completely makerspace we didn't even use the little bits okay and then we made our guitar outlines so the, right. the next day we came in now here's the pro tip for not losing little bits going back to that because you'll find out if you listen to any of the techlandia podcasts, you'll know that john's adhd wanders and i just came back to what brian said so here's my pro tip i bought a milwaukee tool case okay. at home depot and i'm going to give a shout out to my boss actually my boss um is the boss that I really, really like. This is one boss I would never say a bad word about. So my boss, John Peplinski in Beaverton School District, I'm gonna give him a shout out. He said, hey, have you seen this? They used it for something different, but you can get these red tool kits at Home Depot for $24.95 nice. and they have little red cups in there okay. that you can modularly put in there. And then they have two kind of longer cups that fit at the top. So you have about 10 compartments. It's used for like nails and screws usually. But so what I do is I just sort the little bits. So I put like the three code bits that I had into that one. I put all the power ones into another one. And there's some other stuff that goes with this. So the way I did it was they could they I could just put I could just put out all the kits at the same time with this. Because what you find out is I tried to keep them in the nice little boxes. Yeah. It just doesn't work. You try and put them in, and you're like, what compartment? It's got these things. And I know they have stickers for them, but I'm one of those people that doesn't read the directions. I just go for it, right? Yeah, because yeah, the other thing, like you said, that that's a good point about the toolbox. That what I envisioned was if I was getting a couple of them, I was going to put them in the fishing tackle boxes. Right, exactly. Whatever works for you is, you know what I'm saying? And then I had three kits, and then I actually had bought some extra supplemental kits because if you watch little bits, here's a way, here's also, maybe we need a, here, wait, maybe we need a tip. All right, let's see, here we go. Here's a... Pro tip sound effect. Okay. So there, that's, oh yeah's are pro tip sound effects. So number one, get the toolbox. But then number two is if you watch for little bits, especially around the holiday season, mm -hmm. they had a two for one sale. Mm -hmm. So I bought one of the kits for $149, but I actually got two of them. That's so good. then I just supplemented good with job. those. So then, right. So then you're, I mean, so then you're paying, I mean, 75 bucks is not that bad. And um, early, earlier you mentioned power. Do they all use nine volt? So, right. So some of them use nine volt. Mm -hmm. And then, so some of them now, so the, the code kit actually has a, and this is the one I have right here, actually. So it's a micro USB power, kind of like the Raspberry Pi. Got it. Right. So then you can just plug this in. And then there are also little clips and nobody will see this, but there's little blue clips that you can put on like some of the other supplemental bits and then they'd get the power because you're plugged in to the USB. And the thing that's cool about it, like you're saying, they're magnetic, but they also do have little tiny arrows on them that show you which way the power is going. So that if you do, and that saved a couple of the kids. So they said, look at that and see, are your arrows all matched up and going the same way? And they weren't. So then they could go ahead and debug that. I kind of, yeah, I, I like on the little modules how they're kind of like, they look like they're handwritten on there. So. Right, right. The USB power says USB power on it. So yeah, kind of cool. I so, want to see, I want you to share, if you can, the Rockstar guitar video with me offline. So, cause I, cause is that with the synth kit? Yeah. So no, it, so the thing is, okay. So yeah. So here's the thing. So the synth kit totally separate we didn't even have to use the synth kit it's all the coding kit but if you have the synth kit brian yeah i think you could combine it and make it pretty awesome because it uses the same speaker so one of the speaker bits comes with the coding kit so, right so i can make the like the zz top two, two neck guitar you could totally could kit. You totally right. could. So, um, right. So you, that, I mean, that's awesome. You could be, you could pretend you're dusty roads, whatever you want to do. <laughs> Cause I, I am a sharp dressed man. I know. I used to drive by LaGrange all the time. And when I lived in Austin, I mean, I was like, 
wow, it's LaGrange. And then you look and it really is. It's <laughs> LaGrange where ZZ Top is from. The song is about. So um, we won't even get, we won't even go there. But remember the song LaGrange is, a, it's kind of like the movie with Dolly Parton and Burt Reynolds about a place that we're not supposed to mention in Texas. Oh, the yeah. best little place yeah. to go in Texas. <laughs> Uh -uh. There we go. <laughs> we, we try and give pop. You know what? We didn't give any pop culture on the last one. We, we'll we'll try and throw some pop culture at you. That's one thing, Brian. Can you throw pop culture? Because Scott Bedley can't throw pop culture. He's like, who's Jonah Hill? And I'm like, come on, dude. You don't know who Jonah Hill is. You can't pull that name out and tell me some movies. Can yeah, you do I got, that? I can do some pop culture, especially like '80s trivia too. Would be good too. Right, Brian. Mm -hmm. Scott can't even do that, Brian. I mean, he's like what Scott Bedley. Man. Teacher of the year, but yet I, you know, sometimes those teacher of the year. So when you do the when you do the cardboard part, then the next day we coded the stuff, mm -hmm. and you you watch the video, and it does show you how to put them together, and then you can do like there's little sliders, and then it totally pitch changes pitch. And I will put I do have like a little Vine video that I can put into the Adobe Spark page, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's it's awesome. And so they cut it out, and they were really psyched. Took pictures. Put mm -hmm. it on a bulletin board next to their guitars because then after they make their guitar and played for a few minutes, yeah, it was time for the next station to go. Like because I had other students going, so we had to disassemble, disassemble mm -hmm. everything, and then put it back one more time so that the other people could do it. Okay, so it I, doesn't stay together too long with the white square on it with all the bits and like there's a little extra wire that you can put up onto the neck of the guitar. It's really yeah. cool. Okay. So. I have two questions for you. Sure. Uh, when you were working with these groups, one question, how many days did you work with them? Okay, so the first day we introduced and just I had them explore. Okay. The second day we did, um, so these are about 30 to 40 minutes each time. Okay. I had, I had a good flexible teacher with Miss Willis is a good, um, Mar I'll say her name, Margaret Willis, is a good flexible teacher. So introduction the first time just kind of had them explore showed them introduce some of the parts second one was hello world and they got it to work third one was watching the video makerspace guitar cardboard building fourth day was coming in hooking up the guitar doing the coding and now the fifth part of it which is pretty cool is what we did is we went back and then now it's time for them to iterate and create their own invention nice. and so we gave them actually I gave them probably a double lesson on that one. So each one it was 90 minutes okay. for that so last one. The follow-up question was on the on the very last day when they're coming in to do starting from scratch. To create their invention. Yeah. Were they were they still interested? Were they really engaged still with them? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. They they really were. They really nice. were. There was um you know, and I, I kept coming in. So I was coming in a lot at that point. There was one person, one girl that was kind of like, she kind of looked at me and she was goofing around. I said, "Hey, if you're gonna like get goof around, I'm like, you you don't need to be here." Mm -hmm. And then she kind of looked at me, and so this is my this will say a little bit about my management style or whatever. But I kind of looked at her and was like, "No, you don't understand. I'm waiting for an answer. You really don't need to be here. This is not a requirement. So you either are choosing to be here and participating, or you're going back to the room." I'm like, "It's it's okay. I won't be." I said, "I won't be mad at you." Yeah. And she's like. Silence, right? Because she, yeah. <laughs> she's oh, like, okay. wait, who's this weird guy? And I said, no, no, no. I said, I'm requiring an answer. Are you going to stay here and participate? Or are you going back to the classroom? I will require an answer within about the next five seconds. And so then she's like, oh, I'll stay. So she stayed. Yeah. But um, we had students that stayed in during their recess. Mm -hmm. And we had a student that stayed behind during their lunchtime and just ate their lunch. And we're, we have a, they have a nice little section in the library where it's kind of their makerspace staff meeting place and that's where we did yeah and i think you know you get that interest especially on that last day is you know when it's personalized it's something that they want to do and i think you can get more buy-in in that so i think those first couple of days they get them to buy in on it and again having the lessons and activities because i always fear of oh they're bored with it already mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. i guess it goes back to the lessons if the lessons are engaging and then want that and like create it to have them want more i think that sets it up for the next time so the fifth day there the fifth lesson there of you know build something of your own mm -hmm. so like because that was yesterday i brought in the little bits i have from the garage and i handed them to my daughter and i said here make something um so she just started making and then she stumbled upon 
there's I guess there's an app on the iPad that has a list of inventions you can make. You know, it's a, like a library of them. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the, and so then that's the final piece. So this is what I have to do for um, the kids. I actually just have to type them up and upload them for them. But so that was part of the kind of the deal for my culmination of what I had to do was I had to kind of decide which were the good inventions and try and upload three of them. The important thing about Little Bits is if you go to the website, and of course we'll put the links on the Adobe Spark page, and Brian has links to tons of in, inventions and uh, lessons and task cards, but that's the thing. You any of like your daughter could make something. You would just snap a couple pictures, tell what bit you used, and give some directions, and you can upload it. So it's like a community. It's like Scratch. That's what mm -hmm. we love about Scratch, right? I mean, so you could take someone's invention and instead of just remixing it like you would do in Scratch, and then kind of hacking it and making it your own, you could take one of the inventions and do the same thing with it, just with your bits. So yeah, it's kind of like you're reading it on the computer and bringing it into real life. And I think right. for me, that's that that's the you know if a company is like a great company is when they do things like that without charging mm -hmm. um like because scratch does it little bits raspberry pi has a great resource mm -hmm. section where again you don't have to know how to do it right away but if you give me some resources where i can build upon it and modify i th isn't that hacking so again mm -hmm. you can you can hack your way through it so i think that's that's really cool. So the little bit sound. I know. Um, I don't know if he's in a, one of your ambassadors. Is David Saunders? No, I mean I think it was just kind of like I don't think it was very publicized. Okay. With this one, so I think I think it was just kind of kept under the radar, and so it was people that could really like they they had some thing. You really had to use it with students, or else they were gonna take them back, right? Yeah. So David is out on the East Coast. And uh, he has libraries mm -hmm. instead of libraries. And he has two, I believe he has, he, he oversees like two. That. And I think he has two of like the huge lab kits, which is like what, like 2,000 pieces. Yeah. And he shares a lot of great stuff on Twitter. He's designed Saunders. Um, so he's, he's been my resource if I've had questions before, before you. Mm -hmm. uh, was that BJ? <laughs> um, but he's another great resource to to look out to also so yeah there and again twitter again look at some uh a lot of people do share which is great because again these are fun engaging little pieces that again it, it fosters that wonder you know i wonder what i can do like i already with the synth kit i shared with you i want to make uh two turntables and be a dj right and see if I can make the scratching sound and play like to Houdini or, you know, yeah. the Furious Five and like scratch along with the synth kit. So that's kind of one thing I've want to sit, sit down and tinker around with. I know it'll be good to, it'll be good when school's finally out here in Beaverton in the summertime, if we can actually sit down and do something. You can have it like your summer is going to be like two weeks and then it's going to be the new school year to start again. We, we start after Labor Day, so we have that at least. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I've decided this is the theme to the crowdsource corner. Crowdsource corner. Got okay, it. all right. So, so my crowdsource corner for this. Uh, so do we pick the same one? We might as well. Are we just going to do the one, or you want to do both? We're let's actually do both. And, okay. Let's do both. And now here's since this is new, we're still building on this. Let's say you have to make it as an elevator pitch. Okay. So Ooh. you got to go quick. Okay. Okay, so my elevator pitch. Okay, so mine. So we picked the same one. We'll confess right now. Yeah, we um, did. There's a. What's the deal with the gold Kickstarter right now? Until it's just ones that are relaunching. They're relaunching, or they're like ones that are popular, kind of. You know, the gold standard. Okay, so here's the gold standard. So I didn't know this, but so of course it's suggested for me. So. Cubeto, I do have experience with because we do have some in our school district. Cubeto is a way for teaching um, three to five year olds, three to six year olds coding using a big block robot that will move and a big block board. And you don't even need an iPad then where you can pluck blocks in with the arrows. And then they have a big mat where you can say, go to this lake and they have to kind of find or they can find their way around things. So it is probably the earliest type of coding 
logic-based kind of robot that I have seen that you can use, Cubetto. That's a great uh, precursor to that's the Peabot. That's you your like pitch? That You're not I can't hear you. What? Are you muted? No, I can hear you just fine. I can't hear you at all. Oh, no. Here, maybe I'll take out maybe I'll take out my headphones or something here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and give yours then. We'll hope that it's coming in. Let's see. Hold on. Let me take off my thing. I, I hate can when I have to edit. Okay. Can you hear it okay? Okay. Now I can hear you, but I'm gonna take out my headphones. Okay. Okay. Uh, so anyway, sorry. That I, I hate when I have to edit an episode. I just want to start it and then stop it. Okay, I'm muting my microphone. Elevator pitch for yours, Brian. Go. All right, we need the little elevator signs. Here we go. Uh, floor one. Mine is called Turtle. Turtle, like a turtle, but Turtle. What it is, it's a little robot. Um, it's a little small robot that uses solar power, and you put it in your garden, and it's got like a little uh, weed cutter on the bottom. So you just set it on your garden so it tills up the ground with its angled wheels, and then it's got like a little weed eater thing that chops the weeds that then cultivates into the soil. And it just just constantly runs. There's no battery. It gets its power from uh, the sun. So whenever it gets charged, it goes forever as long. And if there are plants that you want to keep in your garden, you put a little guard up around it, and it feels that uh, bump, and then it moves on. So if there are seedlings, it won't cut them. And then once they grow tall enough, you can take the guard off. When it bumps into the plants, it keeps on going. So it just tills up your garden, and it's, I guess... It's the robot version of a farmer. I, I just envision it as a large scale, um, building these biggers for bigger farms. This is, again, a son of a farmer. Just being able to just set it loose and, you know, you alleviate my job going out pulling weeds. So, floor I always, two. I always say that about you. You're a son of a farmer. Son of a farmer. <laughs> That's why I went into teaching, so I wouldn't go on the farm. All right, I'm going to try and talk as little as possible because I have a feeling the thing will give us a preview of next episode, Brian Briggs. Next episode, you, it's not going to be next week because next week is ISTE and I will be hashtag not at ISTE, but John is going to go. So if you're at ISTE, look for him in the little bits booth, You, uh, the six people watching. Um, but when we come back, he's going to do his ISTE recap. Uh, and I wonder, that could be an episode in itself of all the steam stuff that you do find. Cause I would love to see like, because again, on the vendor floor, if they have any new gadgets or gizmos, um, some tools that you can do, I'd love to hear. But again, uh, we'll probably do the ISD recap and raspberry Pi for next episode, the raspberry Pi, We could probably do a few episodes and bring some people in. Oh, wait, I was trying to do something. <laughs> Oh, I get muted while I'm playing the song. So yeah, we'll do. A, I'll. Do, you know what? We want to try and keep the episode. We feel like we dumped a lot of stuff in the. Well, I mean, we did kind of dump a lot of stuff in the first episode. We were just brainstorming. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll talk Raspberry Pi. I'll meet up with some Raspberry Pi people at ISTE, and then maybe instead of crowdsource corner, we'll do two things I found at ISTE that maybe people haven't heard of or something. We don't. Yeah, that'd be that'd stuff. be good. If you do like, I do like it when people throw a bunch of stuff like tools and items at me that podcast is called check this out with ryan and brian <laughs> you might know one of them it's brian so, yeah. Yeah, we'll try and we'll try and keep this one a little bit more focused and i think we're about to head over our th so it looks like we're shooting for 30 minutes an episode but we're probably more likely 40 minutes an episode if that's a problem we'll fine tune it we'll yeah work. hit us up on twitter and we'll uh we'll try and fine tune it a little bit but um look for the adobe spark page we're, ha we, we're, we're doing this one, right? We're doing this all summer, right? Oh, definitely. So next week, we'll have a new episode, and the new episode will be Raspberry Pi and ISTE. I'll be back from ISTE at Thursday. We'll find some time Friday, Saturday. We'll find, can we, you find some time Friday, Saturday, or Sunday yeah, next sure. week? I okay. think so. Okay. That's good. The, the, uh, the Packers aren't starting their preseason yeah. camp in Sacramento or anything. Like that. So this is the thing. Brian and I are good friends, but I'm a Bears fan, unfortunately, and he's a Packers fan, fortunately, for him. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I can't even I can't even argue with them now until the Bears get respectable. So there we go. Until we hit 500. All right, Brian, do you have the sign off? Go ahead and hit it. I think till next time. Keep on wondering. <laughs>